Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to some Club 100 Heavyweight Sprint Racing for Round 3, this time at Wilton Mill. A combination which normally seems to go quite well, so hopefully that can be the case again. Heat number one, let's get going. Eyes on the lights, engine notes rise, and away we go then. So this was race number four of the day. You get three heats uh, in the sprint championships. Uh, three heats, random throughout the day, but uh, you'll be given a front grid, a middle grid, and a back grid. So long as you're not a C3, uh, in which case you start towards the back, and that's just to sort of help you um, with customising yourself to the sprint racing so that you're not attending your first ever race and find yourself on pole um, with lots of uh, old guard behind you ready to gobble you up. So, um, as you can see, Kurt there getting the moves done nice and early. Tricky little braking zone there, and Kyle Walker there trying to make the move to go into the lead, but makes contact with uh, with the driver that was leading the race at that time, and uh, they end up on the grass, and that will end up giving Kyle a six-place penalty for uh, ABC takeout or ABC bump and pass, however it was they judged that one. And uh, it means that even if he crosses the line first at the end of this one, he's not going to win this race, which is unfortunate for him, but uh, you could argue that it's a bit more unfortunate for the driver who ended up on the grass. So um, I don't think there's much argument that can be had there. As you go up the hill, we've got Dan Underhill, who's making a move on, uh, making a move on Steve Bosley, uh, trying to get forward nice and quick, because that puts him into net P1. And uh, Kurt Holmes looking to do the same again, down into this tricky little braking zone. You can see the cart squirreling around there, then looking for a little bit of an undercut coming out of the corner, I end up on the outside going into Wilkins, which is not where you want to be. From the end of the race, Tim Petty trying to find a way past Steve Bosley now. Tough times for Steve Bosley in this race. He's already lost two positions, doesn't want to lose a third, but Tim Petty's going to have a look down the inside. It's better of it, just withdraws from that move. Does well to do so because now he's going to be up alongside Steve Bosley through the final corner. Little tickle of the uh, large monster curb on the inside there. That just shows how much it disrupts your rhythm as a driver. And it was just the uh, the smallest of tickles, but I end up being uh, pushed wide effectively by the curb onto the runoff, and that hurts my momentum. But then uh, later that lap, going into the boot section, I tried to put it up the inside, going into the first right-hander, but our momentum gets really slowed, and Steve is able to keep more momentum going down towards the final corner. Um, than us going up the hill gets squeezed onto that curb at fine lady um, felt like I had enough of my uh, my nose at the inside to be given a bit more room but uh, is what it is we're still right on Steve's bumper so not the end of the world and we uh, end up not able to make a move going into the hairpin due to the fact that there's a yellow flag there so plan C may be coming into effect soon Steve Bosley's going to try and duck underneath here but didn't quite have a good enough run off of the corner and you know what, Andrew, I think that's a bit of experience there shown from Penny because some drivers we've seen today have gone for slightly half-hearted moves into paddock. Yeah. And because Steve got a bit of a compromised run through the last corner, I tried to switch back going through Crook, the second corner, and get squeezed again onto that kerb. And you can see there the, the, the Formula One driver hand of frustration comes out there. But uh, I just about keep it on the track going around the outside there of uh, Boxing Day or the unofficial Boxing Day corner and that's us up into P4, which is effectively P3 after Kyle has his penalty. And that's pretty much how the race would end. So let's move on to race eight and my heat number two, where we're starting 11th. This is our back start for the heat rotation. And going through the first corner, we've got some heavy hitters in this, uh, in this race, incidentally. So it's going to be a tough one to try and get a, uh, a really positive result out of. But I will try my best. Again, going up towards Christmas Corner behind Kurt Holmes, as um, almost similarly to how he did in the in the first race. But Dan Underhill manages to get better, mom better momentum than us. Um, try saying that ten times fast. <laughs> going through Christmas and Boxing Day, which continues to hurt momentum going down towards Ashby, which is where Adam Wright's able to get up our inside. But luckily, Adam is a, uh, a very quick driver, and if I can keep hold of his bumper, we'll be able to move forward so uh, not the best lap one but uh, not awful we haven't completely hemorrhaged places as is possible in sprint racing I'll give Adam a bit of a tap going up the hill to let him know that I'm trying to help him through uh, on this move and uh, we're not able to really get as clean a move as, uh, as Adam going through Christmas we are able to make it stick but uh, you can see how I've lost touch a little bit with him 
um, as a result of not being able to take quite as flowing exit of the corner due to the fact that there was a car on my outside. But uh, luckily for us, there's some traffic ahead, um, slowing down the carts, and we're able to catch back up. And we follow Adam through here, um, going through the boot section. And I think that was uh, Lenny Wood, I think, on the outside. We kind of got squeezed onto the grass. Uh, with, I don't think any real intent, but that uh, gave him a bit of a heart and mouth moment, I can imagine. And then Adam again going up into Christmas Corner keeps lovely, uh, he's a lovely clean move there on Paul Williams, I think that is in front. Um, and I will now have to try and do the same to get past Paul, as we can see. Adam and Dan are starting to move away a little bit. And sure, I don't think Paul saw me coming there as we, um, as I get squeezed into the tyres a little bit, hurts momentum when we lose a place, so I'll need to get that back as quickly as possible if I have any hope in catching back up with Adam and Dan, which we're able to, as the driver in front goes a little bit too wide through the first corner, which hurts his momentum into the second corner, and means that he ends up running too wide, and we're able to slip up the inside. Back onto Paul Williams now, and sort of similar thing to uh, the previous lap, where Paul goes a little bit too wide, and we're able to switch back underneath um, and as I go up into Christmas Corner, I end up going a little bit deep myself. That wasn't defending or anything, that was just me out breaking myself. Um, but that's pretty much how that was finished. I wouldn't catch back up with Adam and, uh, and Dan, and we would end up finishing fifth or sixth, I think, in that race in the end. We've had a third and a fifth or sixth so far, but this time we're on the second row of the grid behind Dan Underhill. We've got Tamangia as well, who was uh, in second place. You can see him there in third, um, who is uh, Mango Motorsport on YouTube. Go and give him. Uh, a little bit of love watching his videos he's got some nice uh, footage um, of teslas and chips and other nice things uh, as well as karting uh, at various places around the country but anyway let's get back to wilton mill as we're behind dan and dan and i had sort of said at the start of this race that uh, because we had uh, joe holmes behind us who as we know is uh, deservingly a champion multiple champion in this series we had to run away very quickly if we had any show any hand chance of one of us running this race so uh, I'd sort of said if uh, if Dan kept the position going through the first lap I'd try and push him along but I could already tell at this point in the lap that things were going to need to change for success. So Underhill, Penny and Adia at the end of the first lap with a stellar start as well from Joe Holmes to get himself up six positions to seventh place and actually fair play to Sam so yes, Joe making the move, so we need to absolutely run away quickly. I feel like I had this pace on Dan here and make the move going into Christmas Corner. And I wanted to try and show him that I wasn't intent on fighting, I just wanted to try and get away, so don't defend going into Ashby. Another driver who every time I see him race, is just getting stronger and stronger. It's Tim Penny. He seems to have found his feet in this heavyweight uh, sprint championship Tim Wood. Tim Penny looking quite comfortable there. Yeah, Let's bring it home. You just can't. <laughs> Joe Holmes' pace at the moment is such that uh, it's not a done deal uh, at this point, I'd say. There is your race leader, Tim Penny, and I reckon he's got to do two more tours of this yeah. circuit to get to bring it home. Another fastest lap of the race from Joe Holmes. He's taken the best part of five tenths of a second. You know, best part of half a second out of Tim Penny's lead there. I definitely didn't pay the DDM and boys, Howard and uh, Andrew, to say those nice things. But uh, yes, uh, Joe is catching rapidly as the rapid drive that he is. So uh, no mistakes were needed from this point 1. on. 1.3 seconds, even over Joe Holmes. That should be good to just see this one out and take a heat victory here today at Wilton Mill. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter who's behind you at the end of the day. The stopwatch is the stopwatch. Um, Tim Petty. I mean, he'll be glad it finishes when it does, I think, yeah. when he watches it'll it be, back. He'll be, be wanting these corners to go by quicker and quicker, because <laughs> Joe is closing, but this is the last lap. Hasn't had a win yet so far this year in a heat race, has Tim Penny. Looking to make another A final through into the boot. Just got to keep it neat and tidy, Tim. And he's done just that round the final corner. First heat win of the year for down to race Tim Penny. Very good stuff indeed. Wins by 0.8 of a second over Joe Holmes. Dan Underhill, more good points for Dan in third. Tim Williams, fourth. So that was the final heat of the rotation. We got a win, so we had a third, a fifth or a sixth, and a win, which puts us fifth on the finals grid. 
and uh, in a good position to possibly get on the C2 podium. So as we roll up to the line, you can see we're behind uh, a duo of Holmeses with Dickie Allen, uh, Adam Wright, Alex Pritchard around us. We've got Dan Underhill right behind as well. So it's very much a case here of keeping it clean and then trying to break away at the front with this uh, group of C1 drivers who are all very, very quick indeed. So try to go around the outside of Christmas and Alex Pritchard says, oh no, you don't, sunshine. And uh, <laughs> uh, that means that Dan Underhill is able to get round our outside going round Boxing Day with a bit of better momentum than what we had. Uh, but we do secure um, second place effectively in C2, having dropped a few positions, which isn't ideal. Uh, realistically, the only driver that matched to us at the moment is Dan in front because he is C2, the rest of the ones in front are C1 drivers. Charles managed to get himself up to fifth place uh, ahead of Tim Penny and crucially Dan Underhill from the Class 2 perspective. Crucially, Dan Underhill uh, has got by on Tim Penny up into sixth place. So, yes, reaffirmed by the DDMM boys there that uh, Dan is the cart that we need to get past if we want to win this race. Um, and try and take a bit of a take a bit of a stranglehold of uh, the C2 Championship. As Dan just Kurt goes up the inside of Joe, there really hurts his momentum going through Ozius, and uh, it's all kicking off quite early. We're only on lap two, and uh, already there uh, seems to be some interesting fighting. Maybe could have gone for a move there on Dan, but uh, it only would have slowed us down at this point. And uh, it's a longer race. The the finals we've got 14 laps rather than the sort of seven or so that we were having in the heat so uh, as you can see the group that we're in at the moment has kind of already made a bit of a breakaway from the carts behind so if uh, if a lot of us are able to stay reasonably sensible um, we're putting ourselves in a good position especially Dan and I being that we're the only two C2 drivers here um, as Joe makes the move on Alex Pritchard in front he's working his way back forwards and uh, as you can see Adam Wright is uh, currently in second place behind Dickie Allen who um, does like to uh, back people into each other I think, uh, that was said in the commentary as well that uh, you've got some different styles of leading a race at the front and uh, Dickie is very very good at making the people behind squabble and then break away himself but say hey, we've seen it work before there's Dan Underhill sixth place ahead of Tim Penny that's a yep. battle for C2 honours at the moment the pass penalty awarded to John L. Mahai. So Dan starts defending at this point and the, the group in front are breaking away and I, I don't want them to. I want to try and catch back up because uh, if we could stay with them as uh, as a little two, as a little pair of C2 drivers, we could get a, a really good result out of this. So um, I'm trying to not follow Dan uh, as he's defending to kind of show, look, I'm not trying to attack you right now. I just want to catch back up with the guys in front, um, which I think he eventually he eventually sees. Um, and the squabbling of the carts in front has meant that we've caught up probably a lot quicker than we would have done otherwise if they were just uh, getting along and um, and working together. So we're now back on the bumper, and Dan it gets really good launch coming off of the, uh, the first part of the boot. I mean, he can get down the inside of Alex and has a go at Adam as well. Going through the last three corner. wide across the line into oblivion. They all sort themselves out, but Alex Pritchard is through there on Adam Wright as well. Tim Penny looking to tuck underneath Dan Underhill for the class two lead. Here. With all that excitement, though, I'm able to get the cut back on Dan. And I know you might have seen I gave him a little bit of a signal there saying, let's go after them. Um, he lets us through, or doesn't, rather doesn't let us through, but he doesn't fight it too much as we go into Christmas. And that's us now up into the lead of the C2 battle. Um, and with the intent of hunting down the carts in front. So um, I tried to stay reasonably true to my word and not uh, not defend at this point. You can see we've broken a little bit of a gap to Dan and behind, but Adam gets it all wrong going through uh, the exit of turn two, dips a wheel off the edge of that runoff kerb, and he did a bloody good job, managed to hold on to that as well, because a few people have done that over the course of the day, and the ground was really quite soft, um, meaning that I think possibly Adam was uh, the only one of the drivers during the day to uh, save it uh, going up that hill. It's a fast part of the circuit, so hats off to him. A good bit of recovery driving there. But that does mean that that's another C1 driver in front that we don't have to battle with. Another fast C1 driver in front we don't have to battle with. And we are up into fifth overall in the race. We've still got Dan behind us. Um, so we don't want to uh, start getting 
too uh, silly at the moment. As you see, Kurt there starting to be a bit fighty with uh, with Dickie in front, and Alex is uh, there looking to try and pick up the pieces. We've got about five laps to go, which is good for us because it means if they're intent on being this fighty at this stage in the race, we're going to catch up to them. So we've still got about three and a half tenths behind, six tenths in front to try and catch up. But if they keep fighting as they have been, that six tenths will disappear very, very quickly indeed. Uh, good on the brakes going into Christmas. I felt like uh, I was able to keep some good momentum going through there. And then it's all about the exit round this corner here. Sometimes it felt like you were braking a little bit too early, but it really helped your exit coming up the hill. As Kurt defends going into Wilkins, and you can see just how much that's slowing them down as a group. And we are within half a lap, six tenths to the good on this, this group. Kind of storming day as Tim Penny leading in C2 at the moment, fifth place overall. Edward Gordon's had a, a strong run in this A final. Likewise, current the C2 podium looks like this. Penny, Underhill and Gordon, one, two, three. So my thoughts at this stage in the race was don't do anything stupid. I know it's not a big gap to Dan behind. Um, and as long as this group of three, because at this point, uh, Joe Holmes had got to the front and just disappeared. So if this group of three in front uh, as long as they didn't slow themselves down too much, I was quite happy to sit behind whoever was at the back. And if something did happen, pick up the pieces. What I didn't want to do was uh, send a move here, for example, on Alex. Um, slow us both down, possibly not even make the move stick, and just invite Dan uh, behind to get back up onto our bumper and possibly lose the C2 lead. So a bit of a tactical game at this point. We're on to the penultimate lap. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap between uh, the carts in front, but uh, as Dickie makes the move on Kurt, um, that allows Alex to catch back up, and they're fighting going into the boot section, so if we can keep it clean, we could have gone for a move there up the inside, but decided not to, which is probably um, the, the better of the choices. Again, it would have slowed us down quite a lot going for a move there, and we're behind Alex. If we can uh, help nudge him through, if he goes for a move, then we could potentially follow it through and get a position that way. So going up the hill, you couldn't quite throw a tablecloth over us, but they were pretty damn close. And uh, following in the wheel tracks to make sure we're getting as much of that toe as possible going up the hill. It's a little bit of a split that's happened between Kurt and Alex. So um, if we're able to bump him along a little bit to close that gap down, we will do. Um, it means keep the momentum going through Ashby Corner. And again through Wilkins, trying not to run too wide and hit that curb because that really unsettles the car. On the accelerator, nice and early, coming out of Ozier's to get that run down towards boot. But uh, as it stands, we don't want to send a move and end up taking out Alex here. So we're quite happy to, uh, to sit behind. And that would be not just a uh, first heat win earlier, but a first A final C2 win for the year, hopefully not the only one that I uh, have. We go up alongside Alex there and I, I lean over to give him a, a thumbs up and a bit of a fist bump saying good race um, because Alex would end up taking um, P3 in class one which is good for him. I think that's his first podium of the year and as you can see there on the podium C2 winner very very happy indeed and uh, thank you very much for watching. I do like Wilton Mill and I hope you've enjoyed watching the footage from Wilton as well. Thank you to Alpha Live and DDMM for the use of their footage and commentary and uh, until next time, thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a good one.